For our test of beginner tremolo, we wanted to film someone who didn't have any previous experience learning picking motions. And that's kind of tricky because lots of people find their way to cracking the code with at least some playing under their belts. So Kim, Tomo's wife on the Cracking the Code team, and a non-guitarist fearlessly volunteered as our test subject to grab a pick and play as fast as she can for science. As fast as I can? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is pretty cool. It's not often you get to see somebody's first day on the job with one of these, especially when you've been at it for as long as a lot of us have. So it's almost like picking technique baby pictures that we're looking at. And what are we looking at? Well, let's see. We've got the arm resting on the guitar slightly turned a little bit. We've got some kind of index finger grip and the hand moving back and forth. So in other words, we're looking at wrist technique or some kind of wrist motion. And this form with the index finger grip and the side to side motion of the hand We've seen this before. Of course, it's Al Dimiola's two o'clock motion technique, which we test drove in our table tap tests. If we compare Kim's form to Andy Woods, who also uses Al's technique, we can see some of the similarities with the turned or supinated forearm, where we can see a little of the underside since the arm isn't lying perfectly flat against the guitar. So a total beginner has discovered a famous picking motion the first day on the job. How is this possible? Well, there are only so many ways to play. Even if you just picked up a pick, held it any which way, and approached the guitar almost completely at random, odds are that you'd land in some sort of ballpark that is similar to some technique that we've studied or looked at. Now the word random is important here. If you look at the motion that's happening, there's certainly a lot of randomness at play. The pick isn't just moving side to side, but it's moving sometimes erratically in different directions, all of which suggests the interplay of different joints or different directions of joints, not just that one specific two o'clock direction of the Aldemiola motion. It's tempting to look at all this randomness and see it as uncoordinated or unskilled, but it's actually not a bug, it's a feature. The randomness is your motor system's way of trying out all the different ways of moving to find one way that works. It's like your first day with a new video game. Where you don't know what any of the controls do, and the only option really is to just press all the buttons and see what happens. So Kim is basically pressing all the buttons here. And this pressing all the buttons concept was the subject of a really interesting study in motor learning that came out a few years ago from a lab at Harvard run by a researcher, Maurice Smith. What they discovered was that among their test subjects, individuals that had more random motion at the early stages of learning a new skill ended up learning faster. Now this was a really big deal because in the traditional view, we correlate smooth, consistent motions with the techniques of experts, whereas beginners are the ones that are inconsistent, they move randomly, and they often make mistakes. So the randomized motion then, that's clearly the negative. That's the thing that we have to weed out by intentionally trying to be more consistent. Well, this all begs the question of how do you know what kind of consistency to even shoot for? And it turns out randomness is the way that that's achieved. By trying out all these different ways of moving or by mashing all the buttons to see what happens, you can stumble across motions that work better and those are the ones that you then focus on. And when we look at this clip of, of Kim playing, there are in fact these small pockets of correctness. As the clip goes on, we see more of these instances where the pick moves back and forth smoothly along a strangely diagonal motion path. That's actually correct. How do we know? Because we've seen it before. This is the amazing Andy Wood, and we can see the same diagonal motion path in Andy's technique. This motion path, compared to the horizontal arrangement of the strings, is what we call, in cracking the code, downstroke escape, or DSX motion. And it is a way of making clean string changes while also maintaining rapid picking motion. When you use Andy's grip and arm position and perform that two o'clock motion on a real guitar, this is exactly what it looks like. And it is the same type of diagonal picking motion used by legends like Al Dimiola and John McLaughlin. There are even live clips of players like John and Al where you can look right down the strings and even see the downstrokes going up in the air. The point here for this test is that when you and I see it, it's obvious. We know it's correct because it's what elite players already do. The trick is, Kim does not. She has no reference point for what correct picking motions look like. And in fact, 
it's unlikely she could even see this from her vantage point. And even if she could, who would even guess that that was kind of what we're looking for out, out of a picking motion like this? When we look at this clip close up, we can see that she's sort of slowly figuring it out as the clip goes on. You have these pockets of correctness, and then right after that, you flip flop away to some other randomized motion. Again, mashing all the buttons to find what works. If the motion is unfamiliar enough, even though she's doing it right, she doesn't recognize it. And that's why the flip flopping is happening. A pocket of correctness and then random. A pocket of correctness and then random. But the pockets are getting longer and this interstitials of randomness are getting shorter as the clip goes on. At the very end of the clip, she actually ends on a pretty smooth sequence. It's really cool watching the learning process unfold like this. Now there is a take two where things get even more consistent. Now, I don't know what happened between take one and take two, but this is really cool. Look at how different this looks. Take one had a pad to pad grip, which resulted in a very low degree of edge picking. That's where you take the pick and you orient it so that the flat side of it presses against the string. And when you play with low edge picking like that, it can sometimes be hard to make the pick move smoothly across the string. Take two, she switched to a trigger grip, which is when you take the pad of the thumb and press it against the side of the index finger, orienting the edge of the pick against the string or specifically what we call the leading edge of the pick. It allows the pick to flow more smoothly across the string. Somehow, I don't know what inspired the grip change, but somehow she's figured out this trigger grip and the higher degree of edge picking to increase the smoothness of the attack. Not only that, but it's not really the hand moving anymore. The hand and the arm are now moving away from the camera and toward the camera as a unit. And we know what that is, that's elbow motion she seems to have somehow gravitated toward both this pick grip and elbow motion, and that choice now seems consistent throughout the entirety of the clip. Take two is almost completely elbow motion. And again, the elbow is a kind of a simple joint. It really, by virtue of its simplicity, in some sense is almost easier to do because you just can't move in all these randomized directions or as many of them as we saw in take one. So sure enough, the picking motion is more consistent in take two. And guess what? As a result, the speed is way higher. Just for reference, take one was about 165 beats per minute, 16th notes. Now that's already pretty great because that's faster than an inefficient technique could even go. So we're already on the right track, but now take two, in those pockets of correctness, which are getting longer and faster, we are already over 200 beats per minute, 16th notes. Now elbow is a fast joint. A lot of times when we tell players who are new, we say just throw it out, everything out the window and just give us any motion at all that goes fast. Elbow is one of the motions that we see very commonly. So it's not a surprise necessarily that we're seeing it here, but it is impressive the degree of the consistency that we're seeing here, especially since we didn't provide any instruction at all um, as far as pick grip or joint choice or motion or any of that stuff. Notice also the diagonal nature of the motion path. Elbow technique produces the same diagonal DSX motion path that the Demiola two o'clock wrist technique does. And very often you find that players that can do the wrist version of that also are good at elbow technique and very frequently either switch between them or even perform both motions at the same time. Everything else that's missing here, whether it's the lack of smoothness in the pick attack or the remaining randomness of the motion, where we sometimes miss the string entirely, or we pick too far past the string in one direction, or too far past the string in another direction, we can work with this. All of that stuff, smoothness, consistency, endurance, accuracy, those are the things that we can work with the student to improve over the long haul, or what I call the long tail of the learning process. But the thing we can't compromise on is everything that we're seeing that's right here. We need that efficient, fast motion happening as soon as possible. We can always take the smooth motion that's a little bit less than accurate and slow it down to work on the accuracy. But what we can't do is take the slow or inefficient technique that isn't capable of high speed and speed it up, again, because it's mechanically inefficient. So one of the ironies of learning a technique that you don't know how to do is that the first thing you need to do is do it right. I know that sounds weird. How do you know how to do it right? Well, you do it exactly as, as we're seeing here, randomly. The first successful attempt at something is almost always gonna be a trial and error attempt 
that happens at a kind of real world speed. It doesn't have to be the fastest speed ever, but it has to be a speed where the technique would actually exist in real world usage. Because if it's not, and you're going super slow, then it's all kind of fake. You're just making up a motion that may, or be, may be correct, may not be correct. It's very hard to tell. It's only when you get going at real world speeds that you get the physical feeling of feedback that this motion actually is correct. One of the really cool and I think inspiring things about this is that so much musical practice advice is so vague. It's like, here, do this for an hour, do this for six months, and maybe you'll get better. Everything that we're looking at here is so incredibly specific. We can literally see correctness happening. When great players tell you that they learned by playing fast, quick, first, up front, and then cleaning it up later, this is what they're talking about. There's this famous clip of Sean Lane, a lot of people love to reference, where he talks about starting out fast and sloppy. You may have seen it. Uh, rather than going from a, a one mental process of playing it slow and getting it gradually faster, you approach it from the way of playing it fast but sloppy and gradually learn to clean it up. And so and Sean is one of the fastest players of all time, and here he is telling you that you should be fast on day one. Well, it's easy for him to say, right? But we're seeing that regular people can be fast on day one. It doesn't have to be Sean Lane fast. Although, again, elbow technique can be fast for a lot of people. Over 200 beats per minute is certainly Ingve and Paul Gilbert territory, John Petrucci territory, for sure. When these players advise going fast, and allowing things to be sloppy, they're talking about that mashing of the buttons approach, that randomization approach where you're allowing things to just kind of be what they are as a way to find something that clicks. And the name of the game then is discovering when that motion clicks. And when it does in these clips, man, we can see it. And it's so cool the way that that motion just instantly locks on to what is basically the same motion path or trajectory that elite level, trained, smooth, consistent players already exhibit. And we're seeing it here on day one. If you're a beginner, or even if you're an experienced player who's new to picking technique, or for that matter, if you're a teacher who's working with both groups of players, this is a perfect textbook example of the kind of response that you're looking for on day one with a new motion.